Norfolk introduces a new system to alert residents in the event of an emergency. Find out which options work best for you. If you find computers intimidating, we'll share ways you can train at no cost. Plus, cost-free ways to help you kick the habit. The forum begins now. If you still have a landline, you may recall receiving a call in late June with a pre-recorded public safety emergency announcement. Norfolk Emergency Preparedness and Response was conducting a test, which is part of a bigger plan. Tony Castillo is manager of emergency communications for the city of Norfolk. He has details about a partnership between the city of Norfolk and something called Nixol. Welcome. Tony. Thank you, Jan. Yeah. Yeah, Nixel, <clears throat> Nixel is a new partner that uh, we've we've started sharing uh, um, strategies with and getting uh, getting the word out to the citizens of Norfolk in case of emergencies in uh, in, uh, in various ways. Um, citizens can sign up for Nixel through uh, text or online at nixel.com. Uh, the service is free, and they can also sign up for different alerts and when they want to receive them, and and importantly also when they don't want to receive them. Okay, yeah, because there's always those people that don't want to be notified on everything, but just specific things, and and that that leads me to the question <coughs> of you know when when we call something an emergency. Um, that can mean different things to different people. So the pro or the service that's being provided uh, provides different levels of alerts. Is that basically how it, it works? In, in a sense, it is. Uh, we have different uh, uh, different levels. We have uh, community alerts. We have advisories, and we have alerts which are a little bit more significant. Say, for instance, uh, tornado watches or warnings. Uh -huh. We'll send those out as alerts, and folks can get those uh, e either through their text on their cell phones or by email. Uh, just however they want to sign up for that. Uh, some of them are, are more common alerts that we'll send out. Our advisories are for weather alerts, uh, severe thunderstorm watches, warnings uh, of those nature, and a couple different ways we can send those out. One is probably the most often way that we send it out is through the uh, Nixle wire. Uh, folks can sign up for this uh, subscription based. They can go to uh, or text or zip code to 888. 777 and like I said they just uh, send their zip code in there and they'll get the uh, Nixel wire um, mostly what those alerts are are weather advisories the uh, Nixel dial is what we use when we send out uh, an alert uh, regarding a very significant event uh, say for instance we have a hurricane and there's uh, certain evacuation routes that, that we need to get out, we're going to send that out through the Verizon uh, ESL, Emergency Subscriber Listing, which are the landlines for the city of Norfolk. Okay, so the dial means those people who have landlines. That's correct. So everybody receives that. That's um, correct. Everybody will receive that. It's significant enough where we will only send those out in emergency situations, and there, there is no uh, setting of times to receive that. Okay, so the, the emergency situations in those cases are not necessarily going to be... Uh a thunderstorm or a, that's correct. a weather alert, unless that's it's something that's really going to be um, a big trouble. Uh, that's correct, Jan. We can also target uh, different neighborhoods if uh, if there's a uh, situation, say for instance, uh, police activity, say a uh, hostage situation. We can uh, call up a map and with polygons uh, identify certain streets, houses, neighborhoods, and and uh, select those folks to receive those messages. Uh, it, it won't go out to the entire city, but just the affected neighborhoods in, in the regards. Wow. Well, that's, that's quite a different way to reach out to people, isn't it? It is. And it's, it's very effective. We, we haven't done it yet. We just finished up the testing with Nixle, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we're getting ready for that. The testing that you ran for the, the landlines was uh, pretty extensive. Do you have any idea how many people you were to reach? That took a lot of coordinating, too. It, it did. Uh, a lot of coordinating with uh, uh, our PA, PIO and through Nixle themselves. Mm -hmm. So we, we ended up sending out about 55,600 calls. Uh, they didn't 
uh, I'll go to uh, landline. Someone went to fax machines, so we're still working uh -huh. on the cleanup portion with Verizon and Nixel to uh, to ensure those don't go out in uh, in our next uh, our next session. Oh. Uh, it took about an hour and 45 minutes to send those out. So as we clean those up, the the time to send those out is going to get reduced. Okay, so this was only a test. That's right. That was so, only a test. Right, right. So um, will there be tests again in the future, to your knowledge, or do you know? Pro Probably not. I think as we uh, continue to uh, um, uh, send out alerts, we do get feedback from Nixle, and we have reports mm -hmm. on, on which ones were either not answered or went mm -hmm. to fax machines or went to an operator. Okay. Uh, we, uh, on a weekly basis, get those updated through Verizon, and uh, that's probably how we're going to go in the future. Okay. Well, I guess the, the main point of all of this is just to ensure that people um, are informed. Absolutely, and uh, I think one of the one of the best features is that it's free and it's easy to use and easy to sign up. Okay, and let's work through that sign up again just so in case people missed it. Um, that you can text? You can text your zip code to 888-777 mm -hmm. or go to nixel.com and sign up it with your email and your uh, uh, cell phone. Okay, that's N-I-X-L-E? N-I-X-L-E dot com. Dot com um, if you want to go online and do it. Right, and, mm -hmm. and you can also sign up for any other location, uh, as many as you want. If it's a uh, location out of the area, maybe you have uh, friends or family in another geographic location, you can sign up for oh, really? as okay. many as you want for free. Great, so it's not just uh, just exclusive to where you live or work. Correct. And you can sign up for more than one in the city. Absolutely. Yeah, great, so there's a lot of flexibility. Um, built into this. Right. There, it's, a, it's a great product and we're looking for a, a long relationship with Nixle. All right. Well, good. When we have a, you know, of course, hurricane season, we're in the middle of it, but it's starting to probably heat up for us um, as we get into August and September. So that's good to know. And thank you for sharing the information. It's a, a new system that the city of Norfolk is working with um, for its residents. And um, so please give them a text, sign up and, and get involved. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jen. All right. If the idea of working with a computer freaks you out, help is out there, and it's free, and it's convenient. Don't go away. So I've come up with the family emergency plan. Great. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. How will we know what to do? You won't. I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Thanks for this, sweetie. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Computer training may sound daunting to the uninitiated, but it's never too late to start and plug into the 21st century, especially when you have so many ways to learn. I have invited Raquel Taylor from Norfolk Public Library, Lynn Berg of Prime Plus, Norfolk Senior Center, and Trina Tolentino Pruden of Parks, Recreation, and Open Space to share what is out there. And there is a lot out there. People just don't know where to start sometimes. So I thought bringing you all together, maybe we could get that conversation flowing. Sounds mm -hmm. good. Sounds so. Good. Let's start with libraries because libraries are um, where you work and also because this is uh, a place that many people will go, the public goes, to get information, whether it right. be online or in person. Right. So, uh, and and they, you do offer quite a few resources in this regard. We do. Uh, well, as a lifelong learning institution, it's our goal that all of the citizens of Norfolk become competent users of technology so we offer computer classes at most of our library locations I think this summer we have about nine locations that are offering classes okay. we have them in the a.m. as well as the p.m. 
and you do not have to have a Norfolk Public Library card to sign up for our classes. You just simply go online to the website mm -hmm. or you can stop by any location and pick up a schedule. But the classes are for beginners as well as more advanced users. Okay, so you cover the gamut. And uh, the idea of being able to, to call or come in person is helpful for those who don't even know how to go online and find out, yes. which is the case in, uh, for some people. They just, mm -hmm. they don't want to go there or they're being, they're you know, dragged kicking and screaming, you know, to, to even touch a computer, but it's very important. And the classes yeah. that we offer are for uh, novice users. If you've never touched a computer, we have intro to computers, intro to email, intro to internet. Wow. If you're looking for a little more experience with applications, we offer Microsoft Office programs, Excel, PowerPoint, Word, Access, and again, the classes are from beginner to advanced. So um, we really encourage people to get into the libraries. We have trainers who are highly skilled and it's a very intimate setting. They're very hands-on. So if you're a little nervous about using technology, it's, it's a great place to begin. Okay, great. So uh, Norfolk Public Library and about nine of the branches. Approximately right nine of the branches. We try to offer them citywide at various locations mm -hmm. so that people have an opportunity. Yeah. to attend. Okay. Well, um, that is uh, certainly one way to get some training, but also to access computers themselves because not everybody has one at home. Right. And each library location has at least 20 computers with the exception of our Pretlo Anchor Branch Library, which has at least 50. Now, you do have to have a library card to use the computers. Okay. You can access the computers for up to two hours. If you don't have a library card, you can get a temporary internet access card. Okay. And you can always just get a library card because I don't think that takes a lot of energy. Absolutely. Or time to do Anyone anything. in the state of Virginia can get a Norfolk Public Library card. Well, there you go. So um, there are really no reasons why uh, you shouldn't. The barriers are all gone for, right. for learning and access. To make it easy. And in very convenient locations. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that uh, our Department of Parks, Recreation, and Open Space also has uh, centers where there are uh, computers available and some classes as well. That's right. We have four um, resource centers. Um, we're on the south side of Norfolk. Okay. We have uh, Oak Leaf and Digstown, which are in Norfolk Redevelopment Housing Developments. Uh -huh. And we have Campostella, which is attached to our Campostella Recreation Center, and we have Campostella Heights Resource Center. And we have, um, we have Resume Mondays, where we help people put together resumes. We have classes. We have one-on-one -on -one computer training where you can come in, because we try doing classes mostly. We do one-on-one -on -one people. Nice. We help them set up emails, email accounts. Um, we, we just, we do on demand. Whatever you come in and you need help with, we help them with. Mm -hmm. And people that have not uh, been comfortable with the idea of using technology like that personal one-on-one -on -one do. They really do. That's what they're, that's what they're, they're used to it. And, right. And, uh, and this is one way to, to ease people in. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, once they can get up to speed or to a level where they're comfortable and can actually utilize some of it, there are all these other services, too. That's right. And if they are not a senior yet, they will be, and, and Lynn Berg with uh, the Prime Plus Norfolk Senior Center um, says they have um, offerings there too. You offer a lot of things at the Senior Center. But, we sure um, do, Jan, you know, and I, I appreciate being included. I think it's sure. a really a valuable topic, and I know that all of us can benefit from what each other has for resources because not one size fits all, right. and so this might be a really great opportunity for people to learn everything that's available to them. Mm -hmm. um, at Prime Plus, we offer a commun uh, community um, computer Learning Center, and we have a group of volunteers who has created a wonderful lab environment. We have our own text. These are all f classes designated by people over 50, for people over 50, mm -hmm. many of whom have never touched a computer and are very daunted. So we start with the just starting with computers, where we teach about the actual machine itself, the on off, the, the possibility <laughs> That's of real not. basic, yes. And, and we want people to know they're not going to break a computer. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it blowing up. You can actually <laughs> feel a comfort level and people just having sighs of relief and knowing that they're not going to hurt anything when they operate it. Right. Then we go through computer maintenance. We make sure that everyone understands, hey, you need to clean up your files. You need to organize how you're saving your data. You need to think about your spyware. You need to understand what's safe and what isn't safe on your computer and you need to be careful about that. 
Then we get into this, the Microsoft um, type uh, prog products. So we talk about all of the software there. And then from there, the sky is the limit. Mm -hmm. We do trip planning online, holiday letters, um, flyers for uh, your events, whether it's a, an invitation or a garage sale. We go ahead and launch people into the grandchildren, uh, making attachments, sending pictures, getting people familiar with Skype. We also have Wireless Wednesdays where one-on-one -on -one instruction happens. If you have a cell phone, a laptop, an iPad, we'll make an appointment and sit down and make sure you know how to use it. Mm -hmm. All of our classes involve coaches sitting adjacent to students with an instructor in front of the class. They're short series, so it isn't overwhelming. You don't have to plan six weeks of time. You can actually right. get it in two or three weeks, get the pieces that you need to move you forward on your own speed. Mm -hmm. And then we also update and, and take requests. So if somebody wants to know something else, we're available. Like, for instance, purchasing on eBay or the um, safe ways to handle banking. Um, all kinds of topics come up. And again, we are trying to help people to become so much more comfortable that they can actually do their homework. And we have, a, we have some homework on the computer for folks, and they can go to the library or to the other facilities in the community and actually do their homework and have a text with them because we prepare manuals that are specific to the screens that you need to see in order to accomplish your homework, and that helps folks move forward with confidence. I have to admit, I don't remember which of your organizations offers the mouse exercises, but <laughs> I was exploring these sites just to see what was on them, and one has mouse exercises, and I just thought that was the most delightful thing I'd ever seen. I thought, what a wonderful way to break the ice for people who are just not sure what to do with this gadget. <laughs> and not so savvy. That's right. funny oh, and so fun, and you know, it's like, who knew? But there are there are very creative ways of reaching people, mm -hmm. and you're right, different people have different needs and comfort levels, not only in terms of how much they know about computers and um, or where to find them, but who they're relating to, exactly the group that they may be most comfortable with, um, and if it's in their neighborhood as opposed to maybe someplace where they have right. to travel further, um, or if you just feel like, okay, I'm going to explore this online, Yeah, that can be... Well, maybe down the road they can, or maybe that's how they're going to start. And but. navigating the Internet is very important, yeah. and it is also something that we try and make sure everyone is comfortable with, because when they go out the door, a lot of the world is already connected to the Internet, and what we see is people's horizons opening up. Whether they're transportation impaired or they have some other challenges in yeah. communication, they're able to see on a large screen all of the information that they need, and to, to know how to access that information is key. What we're trying to do is facilitate a better quality of life, give people access to the employment opportunities that are out there, mm. um, helping them to navigate communications well and to feel safe and comfortable in that environment. Yeah. Right. I imagine that the folks that, that you deal with too, are, you know, they may want, want to understand what is a password, how does it work, and also yes. how do you protect those things from others. Right. Um, I right. know that uh, with uh, libraries you may have a password and you said that, that people need to use in order to access something on a computer that yes. you use there. And just like um, with your organization, you know, we start at the very basic level. We right. have people who come into the branches who have mm -hmm. no computer experience at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they start them with the intro to computers, mm -hmm. which involves using the mouse. Yeah. And from there, they advance. So we actually offer the classes on multi-levels. And then, you know, once you feel confident, you can come into our branches. We offer free Wi-Fi access. You can bring your own laptop or tablet mm -hmm. and, you know, use our access to the internet mm -hmm. and we're always and there connect. we're an information hub yeah. so we, there's always someone there to help and you have locations in neighborhoods which is very convenient for people who don't have uh, maybe uh, transportation all the time or they're familiar with other people that might be at the center that's right they can yeah. just walk and we also do classes on we're partnered with opportunity inc mm -hmm. so they have access to their to people who are looking for jobs right. they can go to that workforce development site and see what jobs are available. And we also, like, I believe we did have the little 
mouse because a lot of people don't know that you right click or left click yeah. <laughs> and we also had classes on how to use your cell phone ah. a lot of people don't know how to use their cell phone amazing what people don't know and we take for granted that they do that's right. exactly. thank you everybody for for sharing this information great stuff and i hope it'll help some people out there who have been hesitating thanks for thank the thank opportunity you. you're welcome thank, thank you, you. If you're getting ready to light up another cigarette, you better stay tuned for a lesson on how to get off your butt, and it's not my words I'm using here, and stay smokeless for life. Measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. Okay, you know you shouldn't smoke. You say you're going to quit and maybe you already have several times. But when will be the last time? Alvarine Mack is a registered nurse and a certified tobacco treatment specialist with Centera Healthcare, and she uh, is here to share some information about her um, services and what are offered. And um, in fact, she even had experiences of her own. So, um, having been a former smoker, uh, she kind of gets it. So, Alvarine, what is the probably the biggest hurdle people? face when they are trying to quit smoking besides of course quitting smoking well smoking is um, for those people who smoke it's associated with relaxing uh -huh. and the complicated part of that is nicotine affects your brain and causes your brain to release dopamine and other natural chemicals that relax you mm -hmm. so if I take a puff of a cigarette because I'm nervous and then I feel relaxed I believe it's because of the cigarette. So it reinforces that. Right. That and, it, and it really is the nicotine um, fooling us. Yeah. So I think as people learn more about uh, one of the simple things, and, and I, I usually share it, with labor, when you're in labor having a baby, what do they tell you to do? Breathe. Breathe deeply. And so deep abdominal breathing, free, you can do it any time, um, but it's, it's sort of a trick to get used to reducing um, anxiety and, and you know being upset and worry so that's that's the first piece and breathing really does work even mm -hmm. though you may be a skeptic it does work yeah whether you want to believe it or not it does <laughs> and I su just suggest to people to try it mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I respect is I, I work with prim I work with adults I, I um, have done a few things in the community with teenage group but I work directly with adults and the first thing with that is that they are adults. And what I encourage them to do is to think about why they smoke, when they smoke, and what they're ready to do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not uh, Nurse Alfred saying, you need to do this and you need to do that. Right. We're adults, and um, when pe people approach you telling you what you should do, you kind of get a little feisty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. So my goal is to connect with these folks, ask them, offer them some materials, and then ask them which way they think they'd like to stop. Yeah. And I, I tell them, I'm the passenger in your car, you're the driver. Ah, they take the lead. Yeah. yeah. Because Give them the following. responsibility yes. of making yes. those decisions and following yes. through. <laughs> so do you have any common uh, ways that people may approach this if they've tried before and we're going to try again? To well, make it successful? I'm sorry. Our, our society, you know, we always have this trend towards medication. Well, medication alone, if you have high blood pressure and you don't um, change your diet and whatever and you're just taking your medication, you're, you're sort of teeter tottering. Right. So um, I suggest to them, again, to go through what some of the available resources are, which are improving slightly, 
And um, between the deep breathing, and I just was, met with a group earlier today that has finished, I, you know, did a, a six-week session, but I went back because I'm just so excited about this small group in a, in a, a local area, uh, and they're... Um, the bosses are supporting them to Wonderful. do this. And so, you know, one has quit. One says, well, you know, I'm smoking so much less. And I said, how do you feel about that? And uh, that's a nursing joke. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, he the said, reporter's joke, too. Yeah. <laughs> he said, I, don't f I didn't realize I could do this. So he says, I haven't quit yet, but I'm doing better. Yeah. So Good. and they're not using any, any uh, medication, but the medications come, the three main groups of meds are, there's Nicorette gum, which um, people think it's chewing gum, but it's not. You bite it, chew it a couple of times, and then store it. And it releases nicotine that gets into ah. your system fast. So if somebody's uncomfortable with a situation and they want to go smoke, then they can use it in that. Mm -hmm. There's um, Wellbutrin, which is a, a anti-anxiety med, mild anti-anxiety and anxiety med and that helps a lot of people get through that barrier of mm -hmm. trying to get there um, and then there's some other drugs that um, you know have a, a more stronger and uh, Shantix is one of the uh, drugs that's in the, on the market and uh, it just I think having a physician and nurse at their doctor's office behind them guiding them they can come and they can come and talk to me. They can call one eight hundred quit now, which is the state line, which talks to anybody that's that has a problem. So there's resources that sometimes slip between the cracks. Right, and and one eight hundred quit now is so easy to remember, and uh, and particularly when you're caught off guard and want to smoke, yes, and you need somebody to kind of steer you in another direction Absolutely. until the urge passes or. To yes, and that's else to do. have a friend. I always um, suggest that, that um, in the community have a friend that's really a friend that's going to be there that can listen to you. You don't have to talk about smoking, but you, I'm nervous. Let's take a walk. Uh, you know, we, we mm -hmm. have these five Ds, delay, um, discuss, do something else. Yeah. And so those are things that the person can control and so they feel like they have some weapons against this anxiety that you know that's coming okay it's a it's still a tough it's a tough habit to break yes. but it can be done yes and um, and there's certainly plenty of resources there and that 1-800 quit now is a great place to start also Sentara Healthcare you can call us uh, 736-8272 I don't know if that spells quit now but uh, that is <laughs> yes, <Sentara>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the number yeah. um, to call uh, and you can and check on other and additional resources that are available in the community I know that uh, people like Elbereen will be happy to help Absolutely. you um, and guide you counseling is available but uh, I think most of all you just have to make the commitment have faith in yourself that you can make this happen because it, the payoffs are amazing oh, amazing okay can thank you so one, much one more thing I'm um, okay. no secondhand smoke is dangerous to everyone so please you know learn about it and why it's dangerous because some people think it's just you know a lot of good point. hype so secondhand smoke a dangerous thing yes thank you Alvarine <laughs> thank appreciate you. you coming on the show and thank, thank you. you for joining us see you again next time